Hi, my name is Becca, and in this video I'll be talking about hollowing your models for 3D resin printing, specifically for the Photon Mono X, but this method should work for all resin printers. I have another video on my channel talking about the roundabout way I had to use to get hollowed models to print on my new Photon Mono X. Back then, the Mono X had only been out for a couple of months and Cheaterbox couldn't export the right file format for it. So I had to do a really roundabout method of using Mesh Mixer with 3D Builder to fix the issues that were happening and then eventually sending it to Photon Workshop. Now none of that is needed since you can just do everything in Cheaterbox and you won't ever need to touch any other software like the Photon Workshop. So if you can, you should always hollow your prints. This saves a lot of resin, and if you are printing things for display, then the structural integrity won't be that important, and having a hollow center won't really matter. And by saving on resin, you're saving money, so it means you can print more stuff with the resin you've got, and honestly, was when I started hollowing prints, I felt way better about 3D printing and how much money it was costing me. So let's get into it. Uh, first you need to have the latest version of Cheaterbox. Right now the latest version is 1.8.1 and in this version you can export the correct file format for the Mono X. It also has an improved hollowing system and I have been using it to hollow now about 20 prints with only about maybe two failures. To start off now you want to go to the little tab at the top that says hollow. These are my default settings and if you hit start it will play this little animation that you can turn off if you want. As you can see it has done a nice job of hollowing it out. Ball thickness is pretty self-explanatory. I have mine set to 3mm since I feel it gives the right amount of thickness and very rarely fails. 1mm is super super thin. We need support to attach to the inside of the mesh to support the hollow and I don't think think that one millimeter really gives enough thickness for the supports to really do their job. And I feel like you could try five millimeters, but it feels a bit overkill. You can adjust the wall thickness according to your project. And it's a bit of a trial and error. I think I was doing two millimeters on the two prints that failed. Bump that up to three millimeters and they were fine. Use your own discretion when choosing the wall thickness. The precision setting seems um, pointless. I tried changing it from 90 to 10 and I didn't see any difference. I assumed it would be how defined that the hollow would turn out, but I didn't see any noticeable changes, so I just leave it at 50% and move on with my life. There is a second type of infill, the Grid 3D. I feel it's a bit of a hit or miss. I tried it and didn't really like the output. It feels too dense and wasn't really adding enough for me to waste that much resin doing it. I guess if you want something more durable you can try it but the print I tried it on failed and I'm assuming it's because it had lots of red areas that didn't have supports and it's too dense for me to add any so I just don't really recommend it. Okay so now you have your desired hollow effect. Uh, let's make sure we don't forget to add drain holes. Like every 20 prints I forget to add drain holes and I'm left with a hefty print when I could have saved resin. So let's quickly make sure we add some holes. So go to the little hole adder in Cheaterbox. Choose the size of hole you want. Careful if the hole is too small. It might not drain properly because the resin will cure inside of it. I like to go for one or two large holes in between like 2.5 and 3. You can even like go up to 3.5 I feel like. And put them in areas that aren't going to be seen, like the feet. Or on this model, for example, it's in an area that is going to be covered by another bit of the model. So I can just put giant holes in it. As long as you've got one or two large holes then your model should drain perfectly fine. I like to add two at the bottom and two at the top so just keep the nice drainage. Also it helps when you're cleaning it. It means whatever liquid you're using to clean it can just travel through the, the hollow. And now all that's left is to support. It's very important to support the inside of the hollow. Uh, I like to just auto support because it supports the inside as well in case I forget. I then go through and add more supports where I feel necessary. I'm pretty basic with supports. I just use all the standard settings and I almost always exclusively use heavy supports. I tend to only print rather large things so I can't trust anything thinner than medium. 
Move the layer selector and check the inside of your mesh. Make sure that all the red sections are fully supported. And with that, you should be ready to print. All you have to do now is uh, put your model onto the printer, print it, and bish bash bosh. You should have a perfectly hollow print. Um, this is what happens if you don't drain your model. Uh, it looks perfectly fine. It came out, it printed perfectly fine. I'm going to go now and crack it open and you'll see it's just full of liquid resin and that's not and it's not great um in case like for example and this isn't great that's a, a wasted resin inside of there and if it gets damaged uh, it'll start leaking and you don't want liquid resin leaking everywhere so yeah make sure you make sure you add your drain holes have fun hollowing and i'll see you guys in the next video